With a fierce appearance and a cold heart, I tug at my brother Time's cold exterior but actually a sand-carved girl the first time Shen Qing and Xie Mingchao met was when she accidentally broke into the men's restroom. She wanted to say sorry, but in her heart, she was thinking of sorry, but she blurted out, I can't afford it. Xie Mingchao sneered, do you think people are not good enough to go to the bathroom even though you've seen them go to the bathroom? There is a rumor in Yunhiai that if one can catch up with Xie Mingchao, it is equivalent to having two boyfriends. Because he has a cute and childish face, yet exudes an aura of not being close to strangers. Shen Qing kept the image of Gao Leng as a girl when she first came here, until one day when she heard the voice of indignation roast while reading comic books in the small garden, the people's furniture completely collapsed. Xie Mingchao leaned against the railing with his arms in his arms, laughing casually and casually, if you like milk dogs, you can try considering me. The two people who are rumored to be the least likely to be pursued are together. Someone saw Xie Mingchao, who had always been cool, pull his bow and lift his hand with a ten ring ring. He smiled coquettishly at Shen Qing beside him and said, Sister, am I good at it? Shen Qing, who was considered to have a paralyzed face and didn't like to laugh, gave him a reward and said, Chow Chow is really amazing. You are the surprise that comes to my sight after encountering you unexpectedly. You are the rose that will always bloom in my barren soil. Keywords of the novel Heartbeat Landing without pop-ups, Heartbeat Landing TXT Complete Collection Download, Heartbeat Landing Latest Chapter Reading Chapter 1 Unable to Rise Up in Sorrow You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Unable to rise up in sorrow the last glow on the horizon hides behind the clouds, and the night falls silently. In the bustling city center of Kyoto, at the end of a street, the sign of Night Bar flickers with dazzling light. In the center of the bar's dance floor, men and women were dancing passionately. Despite the noisy background sound, it did not affect the drinking table in the corner. The two people at the table looked contemptuously at Shin Qing, who had already fallen and couldn't get up. Gong Xiaoxiao shook her body and said, Ching Ching, you're so bad. You only had a few drinks before pouring. At this moment, Chen Qian's face was also drunk, with a faint hint of red on his white face. He let out a hiccup, shook his body and stood up, touching Shen Qing's arm. Hey, Shen Qing, why did you fall first when we agreed to celebrate your falling into the sea of suffering? Shen Qing's consciousness was in chaos, and he was awakened by his physiological desire to use the toilet. He sat up like a carp, trembling with fear. She blushed brightly on her cheeks and glanced vaguely at the two of them, then stood up propped up on the table. Ching Ching, where are you going? Gong Xiao Xiao is the one with the best alcohol tolerance among the three, and she is the only one with a clear consciousness. Seeing Shen Qing stand up, he asked anxiously. I'll go to the restroom. Wait, do you still recognize who I am? Gong Xiao Xiao grabbed her and pointed to herself. Xiao Xiao, Shen Qing frowned in confusion, why are you asking such an idiot's question? She breathed a sigh of relief as she was still quite conscious. Okay, you can go. Gong Xiao Xiao still needs to stay and watch Qin Qian, after all, his overly fair face is very attractive to the same sex. No one was willing to sit near the toilet, so Shen Qing smoothly touched the wall and reached the door. She lifted her head and glanced at the signs on the wall, but her vision was blurry and she couldn't distinguish the icons clearly. Adhering to the principle of male left and female right, Shen Qing decided to walk to the right. Just as she turned the corner of the sink, the facilities in front of her made her frown in confusion. Why is there a urinal in the women's restroom? Especially when she saw a tall person standing in her position, her consciousness instantly became half awake. She seems to have gone to the wrong restroom. Shen Qing's heart quickly flashed with words of apology, and she wanted to say, I'm sorry, but what came to her mind was, sorry. The next second, she blurted out a sentence, I can't stand it. The boy who heard the sound paused, grateful that he had just finished using the restroom. 
Xie Ming Chao turned around with a sneer and said, You've seen people go to the bathroom, but you still think people aren't cool enough. Perhaps the person who had drunk had a slow reaction, and Shen Qing turned his back after realizing it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Hearing the footsteps coming from outside, she didn't bother to explain much and ran away with her face covered. The boy who was about to enter the men's restroom saw a girl running out and took two steps back in confusion, looking up at the sign. It was indeed a blue icon. Is it a big shot in women's clothing? He muttered softly as he walked inside, do all the women's fashion masters look so pretty now? Hurry up, let's go back quickly. Gong Xiaoxiao was still thinking about how to get the person in front of him who was starting to go crazy with alcohol, but Shen Qing came back with a panicked face. She stared at Shen Qing's clear eyes with suspicion, what's wrong? There's no time to explain, hurry up, Shen Qing directly dragged Chen Qian's arm. You stand on the other side. Gong Xiao Xiao didn't know why, but he still followed the instructions. Chen Qian is tall but thin, and two girls are more than enough to drag him along. It wasn't until he left the bar gate that Shen Qing breathed a sigh of relief. Ching Ching, what's wrong with your ghostly appearance? Gong Xiao Xiao wiped the thin sweat oozing from her forehead, I'm still awake from drinking. She explained awkwardly, I accidentally walked to the wrong restroom and saw a boy using the restroom. Upon hearing that it was gossip, Gong Xiao Xiao leaned forward with a wicked smile and said, Oh, have you seen anything? Shen Qing has always liked to talk nonsense in front of her, so she pretended to disdain and snorted coldly, she looks like a human, but she's not very good. Ah, uh, the requirements are quite high. A cold sneer from behind made Shen Qing's spine stiffen. Can you tell me how to call it, okay, dot? Gong Xiao Xiao stood facing Shen Qing, and when she saw the boy's appearance, she opened her mouth in shock. It is clearly a childish face, but there is a casual coldness between the eyebrows and eyes. His pupils seem to be even darker than the average person, with a tear mole at the corner of his eye, which was not very obvious. However, against the backdrop of cold emotions, the corner of his eye lifted and showed a hint of annoyed redness. But this cold and stern expression was reflected on a non-aggressive facial feature, with a perfect contour, a straight nose bridge, and thin lips that were pink. At this moment, they were tightly pursed in displeasure, indicating that the owner's mood was not good. Shen Qing stiffened as she turned around. Before, her mind was blank in the restroom and she couldn't see his appearance clearly, but when she looked up, she was stunned and stopped. She heard Gong Xiao Xiao exclaim in a low voice, I'm super, this is too handsome. It was indeed a stunning face, especially those eyes that caught Shen Qing off guard. He had slightly drooping corners of his eyes, and when he pulled them out, they were a pair of innocent and pitiful dog eyes, but those clean and clear eyes were unabashedly mocking. The new book is here. Cold exterior and cute inner sand sculpture girl x childish exterior and cold inner tug brother male lead Xie Ming Chao, Zhao, CP name. Ming and Qing dynasties, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 One in a Thousand Skin Pouches You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 One in a Thousand Skin Pouches Shen Qing knew very well that the other person's gaze was full of aggression, but she couldn't feel any malice towards that face that could even be described as cute. Xie Mingchao's eyes became even colder. It's not enough to see people using the restroom, why can't you take your eyes off my face? It doesn't mean that. When strangers were present, Shen Qing would habitually tighten her face, so in Xie Mingchao's eyes, she was a good dot looking but voyeuristic female hooligan. With her straightforward answer, he was even more certain of this idea. The air froze for an instant, and Shen Qing wanted to say something more to save his image. Chen Qian, who was standing there, suddenly vomited. Xie Mingchao, who witnessed the entire process, finally frowned and turned around. His low and clear voice rang out, disgusting. Gong Xiao Xiao shouted anxiously, Qing Qing, don't be stunned. Hurry up and help him back into the car. 
Shen Qing looked regretfully at the handsome boy before leaving. Why is a cold guy with a very milky appearance? He helped Chen Qian onto Shen Qing's pink electric donkey, and Gong Xiao Xiao rubbed his filthy mouth with disdain. I'm really impressed. I promise to only pour you, but he drank himself unconscious and asked Miss to wipe his butt. You don't need to wipe your butt, Shen Qing was still reminiscing about the guy who pulled him just now. The contrast between his appearance and personality is too great, he pulled him like two, five, or eight thousand yuan. Gong Xiao Xiao struggled to separate Chen Qian's legs and leaned them against the back seat, taking a breath. You too, you have a clear appearance of a cold and beautiful woman, but beneath you lies the soul of the second of them. What's second in the middle? That's called fun. Shen Qing retorted defiantly, beautiful skins are all the same, interesting souls are one in a million. Cut, you have a face that is one of the best in the world when it comes to feeding, Gong Xiao Xiao rode on the bike. I'll take him to the hotel first, and you wait here for me to pick him up. She had just ridden a distance and retreated back, staring at the face that could easily captivate a large group of boys without speaking. After a while, she said, I still don't trust leaving you alone. Why don't you come up too? But I can't sit down anymore, Shen Qing looked at the already filled seats in confusion Gong Xiao Xiao pointed to the gap under the handlebar and said, You squat here. It wasn't until the cool breeze at night brushed against Shen Qing's ears that she felt a hint of regret. Why is it her electric bike, but she is squatting there? Gong Xiao Xiao pushed back the head he was trying to poke out and said, If you don't want a car with three lives, don't move around. Shen Qing squatted helplessly, while the electric vehicle driver carrying three people had no intention of slowing down and twisted the handlebars to the end in the deserted street. She felt the wind piercing her ear and couldn't help but remind, Xiao Xiao, you're driving so fast, Chen Qian will fall off. Gong Xiao Xiao didn't take it seriously and said, he was tied with a rope by me and won't fall off. Turning a street, Shen Qing clearly felt the speed slow down and looked up in confusion, asking, what's wrong? There are traffic police. Gong Xiao Xiao looked fixedly at several traffic police officers wearing fluorescent green vests at the intersection ahead. The tail lights of the motorcycle police car were flashing a dazzling red light, and she was in chaos. Qing Qing, please get off the car quickly. Shen Qing was kicked down by her good friend before she could react. Fortunately, the speed was not fast at this moment, and she only stumbled a little before standing firm. However, the traffic police had already noticed the movement on their side and blew a whistle at them. The loud sound of the horn ran through half of the street. You guys come over. Gong Xiao Xiao could only give up the idea of turning and running, and obediently rode up to the traffic police. Not wearing a safety helmet and overloading, the young traffic police officer held down the front of the electric vehicle and glanced at the back seat, his mouth twitching slightly. What's going on here? After being mercilessly kicked out of the car by Gong Xiao Xiao, Shen Qing could only run and follow him. When she saw Chen Qian tied up in the back seat of the car, the remaining alcohol became clearer. Chen Qian almost fell off the car midway before, and Gong Xiao Xiao stopped the car once. At that time, Shen Qing only focused on pressing on the top of her head that had been hit by the handlebar, completely unaware that Gong Xiao Xiao was using the cake box ribbon they had for dinner. She looked sympathetically at Chen Qian and untied the rope on his body. He was drunk, and I was afraid he would fall down, so I tied him up, Gong Xiao Xiao used her best way of pretending to be pitiful. Police uncle, I'm also doing it for the sake of my friends. Can we just let it go this time? Uncle. He is only 20.4 years old in his zodiac year. The traffic police smiled at her, and when Gong Xiao Xiao thought the plan was successful, the corners of his mouth quickly flattened again. No, he sternly refused, quickly writing the violation clause on the ticket. Go pay the fine tomorrow. Shen Qing pressed her brow with a headache, knowing that agreeing to let these two people come from a city to Kyoto was not the right choice. Gong Xiao Xiao struggled to squeeze out a few tears and said, 
it's so late that we can't get a taxi. Uncle, can you take us back? Okay, we'll be off work soon. You guys should wait on the side. The traffic police posted the ticket on the car and raised their hand to stop a motorcycle. Young man, you're speeding. The boy took off his helmet and revealed a clear face. Shen Qin was taken aback. Isn't this the guy from the bar just now? End of this chapter. Chapter 3 No perverts among the people I know. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 No perverts among the people I know Xia Mingchao also saw Shen Qin beside him, his delicate eyebrows twisted and loosened, and then he clearly curled the corner of his mouth. Has the female hooligan finally been caught? Shen Qin's snow.white cheeks were choked to a bright red, what nonsense are you talking about? Do you want me to tell the police uncle about your criminal process? He leaned on the car with one hand and glanced at her with a smile on his face. Shen Qin had to admit that his face had a sunny smile that made people want to exclaim, good son, if there was no malice in that smile. Xie Mingchao's appearance was indeed extremely deceptive, so the traffic police turned around suspiciously to look at Shen Qin. Little girl, one cannot judge by appearance. She explained busily, no uncle, I just accidentally entered the wrong toilet and didn't mean to peep at him. The traffic police tightened their grip on the ticket. Please don't call him uncle anymore, okay? If you can't reconcile your conflicts well, let's go to the bureau together and have a cup of tea, sit down and have a good conversation. Shen Qin has to report to the school she transferred to tomorrow, so she doesn't have time to continue wasting time here. She decided to cultivate a sense of self-sacrifice. Uncle, I'm really drunk. If you don't believe me, you can use an alcohol test to make me boast. The traffic police took out the tester from the trunk and handed it to her, looking up and down at her. You don't look like you're an adult. Shen Qing blew a strong breath into the pipe, and the display screen lit up with a red light in the next second, making a rapid beep sound. Upon hearing the traffic police's questioning, she knew that if she admitted now, she would really be called into the station for tea and education. She quickly glanced at the person across from her. Xie Ming, who received her gaze, felt an ominous premonition in his heart. As expected, the female thug pointed at him and said, Police uncle, he's drunk driving. The traffic police clearly didn't believe that Xie Ming Chao, who looked well behaved, would drink alcohol. He has a very normal expression and doesn't seem to have drunk, they said Shen Qing smiled and said, Uncle, one cannot judge by appearance. The traffic police choked and had to hand him a different nozzle, blow it out. Xie Ming Chao didn't answer and admitted directly, I drank it. Tisk. The traffic police glanced back and forth at the two of them, sighing helplessly and disappointedly, young people don't learn well. Uncle, have you finished work yet? Gong Xiao Xiao leaned against the car, holding Chen Qian's hand so numb that it couldn't move and asked weakly. The traffic police glanced at the empty street and began packing up, all right, it's already time. You young people are still strolling on the street, so leave work early. I'll have my colleague take you back, he said as he raised his chin towards Gong Xiao Xiao and turned to Shen Qing and Xie Ming Chao. You two get into my car. Shen Qing glanced at a motorcycle about the same size as her own electric car and blinked inexplicably, Uncle, you can't lead the way in overloading violations. The traffic police have become numb to the title of uncle and are no longer arguing, who said I want to use this car to carry you. He patted Xie Mingchao's car and said, your car will be detained at the traffic management office first. On the back seat of the police car, both of them sat silently against the window, trying to distance themselves. The young traffic police officer in the passenger seat glanced at the two of them through the rearview mirror and said, Where do you two live? Taoyuan Community. Taoyuan Community. The tacit answer made both the front row people turn around in surprise. The traffic police suddenly realized, I told you earlier, so you two know each other. Xie Mingchao lazily propped his chin and smiled inexplicably, I don't know anyone. 
There's no pervert among the people I know. Shen Qing was so angry that her temples throbbed and twitched, but she remembered her mother's gentle warning. Girls should be more lovely ladies. She really wants to tell her mother now that the lady wants to use a pink hammer to kill this person who slanders herself as a pervert. The young traffic police officer put on a, I understand everything, expression and said, young man's trick. Xie Mingqiao felt that talking to Shen Qing too much was an insult to his character and was too lazy to explain further. Shen Qing was riding in a police car for the first time, and inexplicably felt a nervous and stimulating sensation of being caught for making a mistake. Her eyes lit up and she said, Uncle, has your car ever been shot? Little sister, we are traffic police, not special police. We only catch those who violate traffic rules, the traffic police officer explained helplessly with a heartbeat in his eyebrows Shen Qing lowered her eyes in disappointment and said, Oh. Recently, she has been pursuing a dual male lead manga, both of whom are drug enforcement officers, so she admires this sacred profession very much. She had the idea of drawing a police officer, so she leaned forward and softened her voice, asking, Uncle, can I take a photo of you? The traffic police readily agreed, okay, I'll get off the car and pick you up later. Xie Mingchao snorted coldly in disgust and said, don't speak with your voice in between, it's unpleasant. Shen Qing's eyebrows twitched violently a few times, but she couldn't bear it anymore and retorted without hesitation, if you don't want to hear, cover your ears. After stopping at the entrance of the community, Shen Qing asked the traffic police to stand under the peach tree at the entrance and take many photos. Okay, okay, she admires her masterpiece with satisfaction, uncle, you're so handsome. The resentment of being called uncle in the heart of the traffic police was dissipated by a handsome sentence. He smiled and waved goodbye to Shen Qing, saying, little girl really has vision. End of this chapter Chapter 4. Do you like me so much? You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4. Do you like me so much? Shen Qing watched as the police car left, and when he turned around, Xie Mingchao was no longer in place. She breathed a sigh of relief, and her face returned to its usual state of being reserved for laughter. Gong Xiaoxiao often says that her face is fed by heaven, but unfortunately, she has a cold and indifferent face. When she doesn't speak, any photo she takes is like a painting. But Shen Qing is an anime house girl, especially fond of comic books. The bookshelves in the room are full of comic books. Once someone mentions the comics to her, Shen Qing's iceberg like face will instantly melt and she will chatter incessantly about it. After taking a shower, Shen Qing sat down at the desk and solemnly clasped his hands in front of the horizontally displayed phone on the table. I'm going to start now. She took out the tablet from the drawer and opened the drawing software, starting to use a capacitive pen to outline the outline of the photo. After finishing the draft, Shen Qing was so sleepy that she couldn't open her eyes. She glanced at the time in the upper right corner, which happened to be exactly two o'clock. She stretched out, yawned and fell on the bed, skillfully clamped her feet, wrapped herself like in chicken rolls. The thought of having class tomorrow made Shen Qing feel so painful that she didn't want to sleep. Due to work reasons with her parents, she had to go abroad and couldn't bring her as a drag on the road, so she was mercilessly sent to Kyoto. Li Qinglu gently caressed Shen Qing's head with a gentle smile and said, Qing Qing, Yinha No. 1 High School is a key high school. I believe you will be infected by the learning atmosphere there and study hard. Shen Qing reluctantly hugged her waist and cried with tears in her eyes, No, mother, I have poor self-discipline. Li Qinglu still smiled warmly, but her hand kept trying to pry away from her. Mom believes you can take care of yourself, she said Shen Qing, who struggled to no avail, posted this bad news to a group chat called, Three People Becoming Tigers. Master Tiger Brothers and sisters, let me tell you a bad news. I'm going to transfer to Yunha No. 1 Middle School, Paper Tiger. Oh, isn't this good news? Tigo. When will we leave? We will practice it for you Master Tiger. 
I am already on the car to Kyoto QAQ, Paper Tiger. Since we are your good friends, let's reluctantly go over and celebrate for you ourselves. Master Tiger. Why use the word celebration Tigger? Of course, congratulations on falling into the sea of suffering. This is a great joy for me and Chin Chin. I want to set off a string of firecrackers to celebrate. Master Tiger. Are you speaking human language? Paper Tiger. As your good friend, we will personally go to Kyoto to see you. You have already given us a lot of face they even deliberately chose to come to Kyoto the day before the start of school, and little devil Gong Xiao Xiao suggested going to a bar to drink. Shen Qin couldn't resist the sugar-coated bullets of the two of them, so he was taken into the bar by them. If she knew she would go to the wrong restroom while drunk and be scolded as a female hooligan, she wouldn't even enter the bar if she were beaten to death. As soon as she remembered the unspoken phrase, I can't stand being coquettish, she awkwardly dug her toes out of the three-bedroom living room. Shen Qing fell asleep in shame and endless regret. The hangover made her wake up with a splitting headache, and she struggled to crawl out of the bed to touch the alarm clock on the bedside table. The blurry consciousness instantly wakes up when the time above is clearly visible. It's eight o'clock. Shen Qing bounced up from the bed, quickly washed up, picked up her backpack, and headed straight to the school. The house Xinyu found for her was located near Number 1 Middle School, and she arrived at the school gate in just five minutes. The security guard stopped her with a serious expression, What are you doing? She took several breaths before recovering and said, I. I'm a student here. What kind of student are you? You don't even wear school uniforms, the security guard clearly didn't believe it, holding a baton in front of her. Did you sneak in from the neighboring vocational high school? You look pretty, how could you do such a morally corrupt thing? I'm new here today, Shen Qing was glad she remembered to bring the school transfer application before leaving. She pointed to the red seal on it and said, Uncle, look, it's the school seal. The security guard pushed his reading glasses, took the paper and looked far away, oh, it's indeed a real chapter. Just as she thought she could enter, he let out another, sigh. Take a look at the time now. Being late is a violation of school rules and requires a 500-word review. Shen Qing hesitated in disbelief and said, right now. The security guard nodded and cleared a spot for her. Yes, I'll go in after I finish writing, he said, Uncle Wang, early morning. A crisp sound echoed from behind. Good morning, didn't you rest well last night? As soon as the security guard saw the person, his originally stiff face lit up like a brilliant chrysanthemum. Hurry up and go in. Uncle, how can you treat each other differently? Are you? She felt that the voice was quite familiar and turned around in confusion, stopping the second half of the accusation abruptly. Xie Mingchao squinted his eyes and sneered at the corner of his lips, the female hooligans like me so much, have they all chased me to school. Upon hearing this abrupt address, the security officer said with a righteous tone, I knew this little girl didn't look very serious. Shen Qing. You're not serious. Your whole family is not serious. Why doesn't he need to write a self-criticism when he's late? Shen Qing protested discontentedly, Uncle, you're bending the law for personal gain. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Both faces look good. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 5 Both faces look good, Xiao Xie is the oldest person to dominate the list all year round. Occasionally sleeping in can help relax the body and mind, the security guard warned as he tapped on the table. Don't talk nonsense, here's paper and pen for you. Right now. That small table is about some time old. When he knocked on it like this, the legs of the table, which were one section short, shook and swayed. On the desktop, there are graffiti and five large characters that have been depicted countless times and cannot be erased by time. I don't want to learn. Even bolded and highlighted in red, it's just what she's thinking now. Shen Qing reluctantly wanted to thank Ming Dynasty for going into the water, 
biting his back teeth and continuing to ask, so he's not wearing a school uniform either. I washed it last night, Xie Mingchao said with one hand resting on the handlebar of the mountain bike, lazily glancing at her with interest. What else are you looking for? Don't delay Xiao Xie's valuable study time, the security guard chuckled displeasedly, and his initial impression of her diminished a bit. Write your reflection quickly. When he turned to Xie Mingchao, Shen Qing had a profound understanding of what it means to change one's face and turn a book quickly. Xiao Xie, hurry inside and I'll keep an eye on this little girl. Xie Mingchao casually stepped on the pedal with his long legs and said, Goodbye, Uncle Wan. Shen Qing watched him ride his bike into the school gate with a mournful expression, and the table was knocked hard again. If you don't want to leave a worse image in front of your teachers and classmates, write quickly. She ultimately succumbed to the despicable materialism and picked up her pen with resentment and unwillingness. Wang Jiangwo shook his cattail fan, and when he caught a glimpse of her handwriting, he exclaimed in surprise. It is said that characters are a person's second face. I see that both of your faces look good. Why can't you think of being a bad student? Shen Qing. Uncle, your cognitive starting point is wrong. I am not a bad student. He obviously didn't believe it, thinking she was still being stubborn. So Xiao Xie would slander you just a little girl. She knew it was her fault to go to the wrong restroom, but she decided to focus on writing her reflection and leave. Wang Jiangwo seemed to have caught hold of her and snorted proudly, Humph, let's acquiesce to our guilty conscience. Shen Qing finished writing fluently, then slapped his reflection on the table and stood up neatly. Done. He looked at the time incredulously and said, so fast. It's only been fifteen minutes. She wiped away the remaining chalk dust on her sleeve and confidently raised the corner of her mouth, I'm not good at anything else, I'm still good at making up nonsense. Wang Jiangwo struggled to count the words, only to realize at the end that she had not written her name at all. He folded the review and put it in his pocket, I remember you even if you don't write your name. Shen Qing is a road enthusiast. Despite following the signs all the way, he still got lost in the vast campus. After circling under the same tree three times, she finally gave up. She had heard that Yunha No. 1 Middle School was very large, but she didn't expect to find even a landmark comprehensive building. Shen Qing missed the small and dilapidated S Middle School in a city a bit. Although the educational resources were not as good as here and the management was even comparable to Huangfu Military Academy, with Gong Xiaoxiao and Chen Qian accompanying him, he could still enjoy the hardships. She sat in front of the stairs of an idle low-rise building, looking up at the sky in despair. It wasn't until the bell rang for the end of the first class that the guilt of being late for a long time pulled her back from her immersed sadness. Shen Qing remembered Li Qinglu's gentle praise and said, I believe Qing Qing is a disciplined and good child. She finally found the academic affairs office of the comprehensive building by using the method of pointing sheep. Sun Bingchun was leisurely drinking tea when suddenly the door was forcefully pushed open and a hot breeze blew in. He frowned and sternly criticized, Classmate, do you know to knock on the door before coming in next time? Sorry teacher, I just knocked on the door, but you didn't hear me. Shen Qing caught a glimpse of the Bluetooth earphones stuffed into his ears, feeling clear but not wearing them. Sun Bing Chun looked up and was stunned when he saw her appearance clearly. He has been teaching for thirty years and has never seen a female student who can be described as amazing. Sun Bing Chun awkwardly smiled and said, It's okay, it's because the teacher is getting older and his ears are not working properly. May I ask if there's anything wrong? I'm here to handle the transfer procedures. Shen Qing has a special habit of subconsciously accepting all expressions when facing strangers, so her already cold face appears paralyzed and arrogant. Oh, what's your name? Shen Qing. Shen Qing. Sun Bing Chun paused as he searched through the archive she was puzzled and asked, What's wrong, teacher? It's nothing. He was glad that he didn't just criticize her. If he offended this young lady, he might lose his job. 
Classmate, your class is in class 9, grade 2, he smiled slightly, his posture no longer showing his previous impatience. Do you need me to take you there? Although Shen Qin was puzzled as to why there was such a big difference in his attitude before and after, he still nodded and thanked him, thinking that he was a person who didn't know the way. Thank you, teacher. Now in the second class, as she passed under the teaching building, Shen Qin could still clearly hear the passionate voice of the teacher coming from several classrooms. Sun Bing Chun led her to stop at the door of class 9 in grade 2 and knocked on the classroom door. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Dog Sitting at the Same Table You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 Dog Sitting at the Same Table There is a math class going on inside, and she looks like a woman in her early thirties with a momentum comparable to ten years of teaching age. Upon hearing a knock on the door, Wang Lin Mei stopped her writing on the blackboard and looked over. Her serious face smiled slightly when she saw the teaching director Sun Bing Chun. Director Sun, what can I do for you? This is the student who transferred to your class today. Sun Bing Chun coughed twice at Shen Qing beside her, and she tightened her backpack strap and stood at the door. Hello, teacher. Wang Lin Mei was taken aback for a moment remembering that Zhang Jianshan had indeed said that there would be new students coming this semester, and then nodded to signal for her to come in. Let me introduce myself to everyone. Shen Qin walked into the door with a bag on one shoulder, and there were screams of surprise below. They took into account Wang Lin Mei, who was known as the Extinction Abyss, and dared not make any comments, but they all stared at her intently. She had experienced this kind of gaze from childhood to adulthood, but her overly cold appearance made it difficult for people to approach, which also made it convenient for Shen Qing, who was somewhat socially fearful. She looked at the dark crowd below, and a dizzy sensation rushed from her feet straight to her head. Many people. Although this class already has the smallest number of students in the entire grade, this is the only requirement that Shen Qing has made to Li Qinglu. Master Xinyu Gong Xiao Xiao once said, If you treat all the people under the stage as big cabbage because of their nervousness, you are the wild boar who wants to rot this cabbage field. Chen Qian added, If Shen Qin is a wild boar, then what are you? If you insist on talking about the same species, then it's the black haired iron backed pig. As expected, the two of them started fighting again. Classmate Wang Lin Mei's call brought back Shen Qing's thoughts. She let out a deep sigh, really not promising. On her first day here, she remembered them both. Shen Qing nodded from the audience and introduced himself succinctly, Shen Qing, female. The latter half of the sentence, hobbies, was forcefully accepted by her. Wang Lin Mei didn't expect her self-introduction process to be so brief, and there was no need to delay her class time so she left a good initial impression of Shen Qing. You can find a seat first. The boys without a desk mate below were all eager to try, and the classroom was filled with coughing sounds one after another. Teacher, let her sit next to me. A lazy voice echoed from the corner by the window. Shen Qing was about to step down from the podium when the sound. When lifting his eyes, he bumped into Xia Mingchao's smiling eyes. Her whole body's blood froze for a moment, staring at the person in the corner without blinking. Is that the boy who called her a female hooligan again? Shen Qing pretended not to hear and casually found the nearest seat to sit down. But the girl suddenly pressed down on the empty table next to her and whispered in embarrassment, Classmate, I'm sorry, there's someone here. Someone. The people of SCHRO Dinger. Shen Qing knew that this was an excuse not to let her sit, so she changed it, but the person also said she couldn't sit. She almost went through all the vacant seats in the class, but the answer she got was none. Such a neat and uniform refusal is nothing more than fear of some evil force. Wang Lin Mei still had classes, and Shen Qing didn't want to delay, so she had to grit her teeth and come to Xie Mingchao's seat next to her. He also gentlemanly pulled open the chair for her and said, Please sit down. Shen Qin glanced at him expressionlessly and reluctantly thanked him, Thank you. 
Xie Ming Chao pretended to be surprised and raised his eyebrows lightly. So you're quite polite, he said she tried to suppress the urge to beat him up, took a deep breath, and sat down in her seat. Wan Lin Mei didn't continue her class until she sat down. Okay, let's continue with this question. Shen Qing had just turned around and had not yet received a new book. On the desk was only a brown leather notebook and a neutral pen. She tried to join the class, but found that she couldn't understand anything except Arabic numerals and English letters. Shen Qing looked beside her, and Xie Ming Chao seemed to have no intention of caring about her. He listened attentively to the class with a focused expression. But as she shifted her gaze slightly upwards, she saw a blank sheet of books. Shu, it looks quite similar. She wouldn't lower her noble head to borrow books from Xie Ming Chao, and he wouldn't kindly give her the books. Shen Qing opened his sketchbook and began to draw on the paper in a bored manner. Xie Ming Chao caught a glimpse of the picture on the notebook, which was a gorilla, with an arrow next to it reading. Dog at the same table. His eyebrows twitched and he even said he was a gorilla. She finished writing the text and began drawing arrows aimed at the gorilla. Shen Qing became more and more enthusiastic in painting, wanting to express all his grievances and dissatisfaction through these countless arrows. The gorilla on the paper has been shot with wounds and holes. Being portrayed like this, Xie Ming Chao was no longer in the mood to listen to the class and pushed the book in her direction. She seemed to be greatly frightened, nervously tightening her body and shrinking to the side, while quickly covering her sketchbook. Xie Ming Chao. Is it so scary? His voice was clear and youthful, Teacher Wang is progressing very quickly, it's best for you to listen. Shen Qing pursed her lips and said truthfully, I don't understand. Class 9 is a key class, don't you understand how to get in? Xie Ming Chao curled his lips and sneered clearly, with an undisguised mockery in his laughter. By the back door. She didn't deny it, after all, she took the initiative to bring up the matter of going to the least crowded class. But she never expected that Li Qinglu had arranged a key class for her. I believe that our family minister is a disciplined child. Is the underlying intention behind gentle praise actually like this? Shen Qing had the idea of transferring classes. Firstly, she didn't want to be in the same class as Xie Ming Chao, and secondly, as a scumbag, she didn't want to drag down the class. Seeing that she remained silent, Xie Ming Chao assumed that she had agreed and withdrew the book. It's really useless for you to listen. Shen Qing silently opened her sketchbook again, and beside her, she sneered coldly, Draw me better. She was taken aback and covered up the painting as if to cover it up. For the first time, Xie Ming Chao saw a guilty and shocked expression on her cold face, with a pen between his fingers tapping lightly on the table with interest. Shen Qing did not expect that the parody sketch she casually drew was caught by the person involved, and her cheeks were stained with embarrassment. Sorry. He lazily lowered his eyes, with a pure and harmless face but a tone full of aggression. Female hooligans still have a sense of shame. She finally couldn't bear it anymore, and with a snap, she closed her pen cap and poked it straight at his waist. Hiss. Xie Ming Chao furrowed his brows in pain, and the sound of his breathing caught the attention of others. Although Wan Lin Mei is usually strict, she has always been very tolerant when facing good students. She put down her chalk and looked at him with concern. What's wrong? He pretended to be calm on his face, covering his waist that had been stabbed hard. It's okay, he said Wang Lin Mei turned around and continued writing on the blackboard, while Shen Qing tilted her head and smiled at him as if she had succeeded. Xie Ming Chao whispered, What are you doing? When I hear you say, a female hooligan, I'll poke you once. I'll see how strong your waist is and how long it can last. He laughed angrily, and the tear mole at the end of his eye jumped lightly with the ups and downs of his emotions. Although Shen Qing finds this person annoying, it cannot be denied that his eyes are really beautiful. 
The innocent clarity in her eyes instantly extinguished her sense of revenge, and the next second, the guilt of bullying a young man from a good family surged. She silently recited the few 24-character socialist core values that she could memorize in her heart several times, and forcefully suppressed the pity that she should not have had in her heart. Damn it, I was almost deceived by his appearance. Shen Qing, right. When Xie Mingchao recited her name, Shen Qing inexplicably developed a fear of being called to death by the king of hell. As long as she doesn't smile, the slightly drooping corners of her lips always make her appear indifferent and indifferent. At this moment, she cautiously purses them in a straight line. Xie Mingchao disdained his already unfriendly face. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Envy You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Envy Okay, this female hooligan is quite noble. Xie Mingchao has a face that looks especially good when he smiles, but he hardly smiles on weekdays. At this moment, he casually raises the corners of his mouth, with a slightly mocking smile that doesn't reach his eyes. Shen Qing, welcome to join class 9 of grade 2. If the mockery in his eyes was not so obvious, with the blessing of this innocent and harmless face, Shen Qing would probably believe that he was sincere. Her scalp went numb for a moment, and years of facial paralysis made her instinctively nod her head. Thank you, she said as soon as Shen Qing finished answering, he wanted to slap himself. With such a cold response, he must have thought he was crazy and loved to pretend. As expected, the coldness in his eyes grew even stronger. Didn't you smile like a flower at the traffic police before, and now you're too lazy to pretend? Isn't that asking for help from others? She forced the corners of her mouth to curl up, but didn't smile, saying, Thank you, students yeah. At first glance, I thought she was stuttering. Xie Mingchao felt that her smile was even more unsightly than not, so he withdrew his eyes uninteresting. The black pen flowed freely between his fingers with his finger bones. His hands were also good dot looking, with distinct joints and cold white skin. Under the sunlight, blue blood vessels could be faintly seen. He looks good everywhere, but unfortunately his mouth is too cheap. Shen Qin let out a sigh of regret in her heart. In order to have a happy life in the future, she decided to go find the homeroom teacher to change her position after class. As soon as the bell rang for the end of class, she stood up reflexively. The creaking sound of tables and chairs rubbing against the ground added a eerie silence to the already quiet classroom. Wang Lin Mei's voice stopped abruptly as she pushed her black framed glasses on the bridge of her nose, and the book she was holding in her hand slammed onto the podium. Classmate, what's the problem? She said with a clear hint of displeasure in her voice. Shen Qing glanced out the window and saw the students passing by in the corridor, chatting and laughing. As she was about to say, Isn't class already over? She silently swallowed back when she received the warning from Wang Lin Mei. Shen Qing could only give an excuse. I want to go to the bathroom. Wang Lin Mei glanced at her expressionlessly and said, Wait a little longer class will be over after we finish this question. She had to sit back again. When I was in S before, the teacher wished they could finish work faster than the bell after class. And at Yunha No. 1 Middle School, especially in key classes, procrastination seems to be a common occurrence. Shen Qing cursed countless times in her heart that Li Qinglu ate instant noodles without any seasoning, and collapsed on the table dejectedly. Xie Mingchao wrote down his answers on a blank draft paper for the entire class, closed his pen cap, and tapped the desk lightly and lightly. She slept late last night, and as soon as she got down, drowsiness surged up. A dull dew echoed through the gap between her face and the table, and Shen Qing suddenly woke up. A faint laugh echoed from the side of the body, sleeping down can be considered a skill. Shen Qing didn't get up, just turned her face to face Xie Mingchao. Do you envy me? He propped up his face with one hand, his pitiful and innocent eyes lazily glaring at her, I only admire your shamelessness. This city has another person she wants to assassinate. Wang Linmei shouted for the end of class, 
and Shin Qin's powerless body immediately cheered up like chicken blood. But she behaved well this time and didn't get up until Wang Linmei left the classroom. At the door of the classroom of class 10 next door, there are several lazy boys standing there. Wang Linmei frowned and walked towards the wall, as if avoiding a plague. Just follow the math teacher and you can find the office without worrying about getting lost. Shen Qing was admiring his intelligence, and a foot wearing an AJ stretched out in front of him. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Likes Dead People You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Likes Dead People She looked up in confusion, but when the person saw her appearance, their flowing smile froze and their eyes showed amazement. They cursed softly, damn it, what a peerless beauty. Shen Qing quietly took a step sideways and pulled back the foot that was about to step on his shoes. Zhou Chen raised his chin and showed a self-proclaimed charming smile, hey, which class of yours? Why haven't I seen you before? The students watching the lively scene in the hallway all know his temperament, irritability, and love to flirt with girls. The girls he has entangled with have only two outcomes. Agreeing to be his girlfriend, or refusing to be forced to transfer without success. They felt sympathy for Shen Qing, but at the same time, they were filled with a sense of schadenfreude. After all, at first glance, it seems like they are just being aloof. They can't catch up, and most likely they can't keep up with Zhou Chen. They can also see her helpless appearance when she can't refuse him. Shen Qing looked at him expressionlessly and said, What's up? classmate. The boys in Yunha No. 1 Middle School are not allowed to have long hair at the neck, but Zhou Chen has slanted bangs that cover half of his eyes and a pink Peppa Pig on the back of his hand. The tight T-dot shirt and ripped jeans on Shen Qing's body reminded her of the spirited guys at the back street corner of S, but they at least have a clear self-dot-awareness of themselves and never come to S to flirt with girls. Zhou Chen shook his bangs and took two steps closer to her with both hands in his pockets. As I approached, I realized that Shen Qing was on par with him in height, even slightly taller by one centimeter. He took two steps back and coughed unnaturally, trying to cover up his embarrassment of only 167 with his cough. I think you look good and barely meet my girlfriend's requirements. So I am honored to inform you that you can be my girlfriend now. Shen Qing's cold eyes swept him up and down and said in a low voice, I'm sorry, you haven't met my boyfriend's requirements yet. Under her calm exterior, she had already greeted him in her heart. Even your uglier attire than a spirited young man dared to approach me, nor did you look in the mirror to see what she looked like. Chen Qian's Chinese pastoral dog is even more beautiful than you. Zhou Chen was rejected for the first time in this passive-to-active way, which aroused his strong curiosity. Shen Qing had already lifted his legs and was preparing to leave the area of class 10, when Zhou Chen's more excited voice rang from behind. What are your requirements for your boyfriend? She met the expectant gaze of the students in the hallway and slowly spoke, dead. Zhou Chen can't really die just to be her boyfriend, can he? A burst of laughter erupted around him and even the little brother next to Zhou Chen couldn't help but laugh. Zhou Chen turned his head and gave them a warning glare, laugh nonsense. When she wanted to talk to Shen Qing again, she had already walked half the hallway towards the office. He smacked his mouth with a haughty expression and said, Oh, woman, it's quite interesting. Shen Qing stood at the office door and politely knocked on the door. The several teachers sitting at the door instinctively responded, please come in. They looked unanimously at the door and glanced at each other again. Everyone was wondering in their eyes. Is this a student in your class? Shen Qing met several glances and nervously clenched the hem of her clothes, but her face remained expressionless, as cold as a leader's inspection. Hello teachers, I'm looking for the homeroom teacher of class 9. A few teachers were stunned for a moment, then they tacitly looked at the man in the corner who was leisurely drinking tea. Lao Zhang, the students in your class are looking for you. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 The Most Human and Doggy One You are listening at NovelFull.audio
Chapter 9 The Most Human and Doggy won the enamel jar that Zhang Jianshan was about to put to his mouth stopped, and when he turned his head, he saw Shen Qin easily squeezing through the gap between the teacher's seats and the wall. He lowered his head and glanced at his beer belly. Every time he returned to his position, he had to wake up the teachers around him to pass. Are you Shen Qin, the new student transferred to class 9? Zhang Jianshan withdrew his envious gaze and asked with a smile, Have you encountered any difficulties in finding me? I want to change seats. He took a sip of poor tea and let out a comfortable sigh, Okay, who is your deskmate now? Shen Qing. I don't know my name, I only know my surname Xie. Zhang Jianshan suddenly took a sip of tea, and Shen Qing took a step back without leaving a trace. Fortunately, it didn't harm her, but the test paper on the table was half wet. She glanced briefly and saw three words written on the sidebar. Xie Mingchao. Although there are many people surnamed Xie, Shen Qing subconsciously believes that this name belongs to the boy who appears harmless to humans and animals. Zhang Jianshan hurriedly wiped the table and noticed that her gaze had been fixed on the name bar. She asked, Is that him? The one in the class who looks the most mischievous. Shen Qing swept the entire class around the podium, and Xie Mingchao was indeed the most eye dot catching one. Zhang Jianshan tried to find a hint of praise from this description, but seeing her face with a cold expression of displeasure, it didn't seem like praise. Xie has been refusing anyone to be his desk mate since his freshman year of high school, and I didn't expect him to be willing to accept you. However, judging from the appearance of this new classmate, it is understandable that Xie Mingchao would accept it. Xiong has a small nose, a small mouth, and peach blossom eyes. Although her facial features look bright when taken apart, they appear cold and unfriendly when placed together. Especially tall and slender, standing in front of him almost blocks all the light. Alas, if Zhou Chen saw this beautiful little girl, she might have been glued off a layer of skin. Shen Qing didn't know how to explain to Zhang Jianshan. Xie Mingchao made her a desk mate just to seek revenge for breaking into the men's restroom. She remembered Uncle Security's words that Xie Mingchao had consistently ranked first in the grade, and decided to slander others to improve herself. He has good grades and thinks that my grades are too mediocre. I don't want to drag down his studies. Zhang Jianshan let out a clear, oh, which indeed seemed like something he could say. Then I'll move you to the side of the study committee member. She's a girl with a gentle personality and should be able to get along with you. Shen Qing almost knelt down to thank, as long as it wasn't for Xie Mingchao, even if her desk mate was a wild beast, she could accept it. Thank you, old man. Before the words of gratitude could be finished, a cold smile suddenly rang out from across the street. Teacher, since her grades are not good, there is a possibility of dragging down the class average. The academic committee's grades are not as good as mine, why not let me take care of her? Xie Mingchao held her sketchbook in her hand, tapping her slender fingertips lightly on the cover, lazily and perfunctorily smiling, after all, being helpful is a traditional virtue of the Chinese nation. Shen Qing nervously looked at the sketchbook in his hand, this bastard actually threatened her with her sketchbook. The sun is really shining in the west, and you actually take the initiative to ask for a table mate, Zhang Jianshan looked at Xie Mingchao in surprise and then turned to Shen Qing. Shen Qing, what do you think? Her forehead twitched and she suppressed the urge to surge out, wanting to beat him up. Shen Qing raised the corner of her mouth with a smile on her face and said, I think there's no problem, teacher. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Xie Mingchao and Mom Fans You are listening at novelfull.audio. The source has no content or has errors.